WBNE. Hello and welcome to episode 168, all about the Rings of Power, season one, episode three, Adar, being the 168th part of That's What I'm Talking About. My name is Mary Clay. If that's too complicated for you, just call me MC. I've been experiencing the world of J.R.R. Tolkien for the first time, but right now we are all experiencing the rings of power for the first time together. Today, I am joined by the wonderful ladies of Now Black Nerds Create, <laughs> Delia and Bayana. Welcome back. Hi. <laughs> Thanks. We're excited to be here. Yes. We just like, I feel like we actually, no, the last time you guys were on was for um, some of the like Silmarillion drama, right? Oh, yes. yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was a very fun episode. I Because, yeah, every now and then I'll like message you guys on Twitter about like random things that happened in this in the Silmarillion or Feanor. I don't know. So. Yes, I know your opinion was not as high of it as ours. We're weirdos. I really enjoyed the Silmarillion. Yeah, I know. It's just, I did. It's, it's uh, Yeah, I'm kind of like. You know, not to fully get into Rings of Power yet, but that's one thing I like is like, I'm like, ooh, yeah, and they mentioned this dude and that dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> just... Yeah, it is fun to see those little Easter eggs mm-hmm. for for us super <laughs> scholars. You know. Total scholars. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the whole time, I'm just like I'm reading the Silmarillion. Really, I was just like, Feanor is extra AF. Yeah, and like, no. that's how I was reading Silmarillion really, was like from that perspective of like, I appreciate the drama. Yeah, so. no, yeah. That, exactly. That's why I liked it. I'm like, it's just a bunch of elf and like basically demigod drama. Like, I'm here for it. <laughs> yes. I had a listener or a message or someone wanted to have my guests real quickly say like what your background is with Lord of the Rings like so where are you coming in from so obviously having read the Silmarillion the, hmm. <laughs> what word just came out of my mouth no word <laughs> having read the Silmarillion you guys are obviously a little bit more familiar with all of the lore and whatnot have you also you've also read Lord of the Rings mm-hmm. and the Hobbit movie yeah. fans yeah yeah I don't remember if last time we got together I had just finished it took me a long time to finish those books and again I don't know if I if I recommended this before y'all listeners can just pretend I didn't say it twice but for me the original trilogy was kind of hard to get through it took many tries but Andy Serkis's <laughs> audiobooks are fantastic so if you have tried to read and you're like i don't know and you've only i mean you've listened you've listened to mary clay so you you get the gist you you know what happens in the books but if you ever yeah, just want to listen gist. if you, if you want to listen to them for yourself wanted. <laughs> if you ever want to listen to them for, for yourself uh andy circus is great so i actually didn't i i it's been maybe a year i don't know in in covid times what is what is time but i think yeah. maybe a year since i finished them or something like that um but yes have read the silmarillion Loved the movies way before that. And I started the appendices, but life has gotten kind of crazy. So I have not finished them, but in process to read the appendices. Cool. Yeah. Um, I'm We're like real similar. So I mostly movies. Um, and then I read The Lord of the Rings. I tried a couple times, like maybe like twice and before I finally like it caught. <laughs> um, and that was, I want to say like maybe 2019. Um, and then... We read like the Silmarillion and the Hobbit this year, um, and then I read the appendices beforehand. I definitely skipped like. There's one where it's just him talking about like how to pronounce things and languages, and I was like, I don't, I don't need to know that. <laughs> That's not necessary for me to know. You know what I mean? Like, I know. it's for some for some people, but it's not for me to know. So that's okay. Um, but yeah, no, it's just like I never expected. Like I, like I said, I tried to read the books, but I was also very much like not pressuring myself to do it because I had tried and seen what was in there and was like, you know what, maybe it's like, again, maybe it's not for me. Um, But since I've gotten into it, I think, honestly, I feel like the Silmarillion is weirdly what made me like more into like, okay, now I want to read all the things. Um, Because I finished Lord of the Rings and I was kind of like, phew, that's done. (laughs) Like, (laughs) I can say I did it and then cool. But like, yeah, now I feel like I'm just like more into it and like want to know more about it where that wasn't necessary like I was really content to just like watch the movies over and over again for a long time um Mm -hmm. still am content to do that but just like now I want to know everything so 
And the Silmarillion will tell you everything. Yeah. So. Yeah. It is. <laughs> and it I is, love, it's, like, I love mess. So I'm just like, wow, what a, like, this is just a lot going on and so many things could be avoided and I love it. Well, speaking of, whoo, this is a lot. <laughs> let's talk about this episode where a lot of things happen. The episode description says, I just find the, like, way that um, the episode descriptions are written to be really funny because sometimes it's like, mm, I don't know if that's true, but they're also trying really hard to not, like, spoil anything. Mm. So I just enjoy reading them. Aaron Deer finds himself a captive. Galadriel and Halbrand explore a legendary kingdom. That's funny because it makes it sound <laughs> right. like they're like adventuring yeah. <laughs> and yeah. best buds. Ellen Dill is tasked with a new assignment. Nori faces the consequences. <laughs> Just that. <laughs> oh no, the consequences of my actions. Oops. <laughs> um, and I will mention that this has the. I'm completely ignoring any kind of like user ratings, but this episode has the highest critics rating on Rotten Tomatoes so far of the three episodes with mm. an 88%. So it seems to be doing a little bit better with some people. Yeah, I just watched it for the first time like a few hours ago. Um, and I was really blown away with a lot of things. Um, we get this introduction to like, I appreciate that we got an introduction to like a new part of the world, mm-hmm. kind of like widening what mm-hmm. we're seeing. We're meeting new characters. Um, and it feels like, oh, okay. Yeah. Again, like Nori faces the consequences. It feels like there are like some consequences throughout this episode that we're exploring. So I I feel like it's not just as much... Like, it's still setting up a lot, but it does feel like, okay, we're, like, really moving the story forward with, like, these characters and these plot lines. Yeah. So I enjoyed it. And then I also highly enjoyed it because everyone in Numenor is hot. <laughs> Just, like, incredibly hot. Oh, my God. They're um, so we'll queen. Get into that. It's, like, <laughs> oh it's like wild. I didn't really think about it. I mean, I guess we haven't seen, like... Oh my God. I guess the elves were clean, like most of them. We were in like Linden and yeah, stuff, but, like, but they're even pretty. Yeah, but like this is like okay, no, we're like everyday mm. workers, Every but we take man showers on, that sh- <laughs> on those ships, and like the water was yeah. like spraying. Their hair was all like them. majestic. Like the hair is. Fl- oh my yeah. god. Okay. Anyway, how did you guys feel? <laughs> Besides the hotness, how did you guys feel? I was really excited to see um, Numenor, and uh, as soon as we were on the ship, because that's where what we see first, right? I was. I was like, okay, I get the vibes. It, I, I don't know exactly what it was about it, but they very clearly communicated the vibes just even on the ship so that mm-hmm. when we finally actually entered Numenor, like everything matched up. And I was really impressed with how they were able to communicate that with just a little screen time. I wasn't, it wasn't like we were on the ship and it was just a bunch of like, I don't know, seafaring dudes. And then I have to wait till we're in Numenor to kind of figure out what these people are about. Mm-hmm. I felt like already visually, I was like, oh, okay, this is a signature style. I've got it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. I liked the episode. I yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm just having a good time at this point, which is nice. That's kind of what I feel like, like too. Yeah, yeah, like I which I which is nice because I feel like a lot of times I am like you know there are just other things that are kind of in my head like Ugh, why would you do that or like okay like what's going on here whatever and like this time I was just like no this is great everything is beautiful and like the shots are just like ridiculous and there's so much color and light and I still can't get over the fact that I can see everything so it's just like oh my gosh yes (laughs) it's like it's still like in my head like wow like I'm not like squinting I'm not thinking like oh do I need to like close my window (laughs) to make sure like (laughs) turn off the light yeah yeah yeah, watching a completely dark room like am I and so like and you know other shows are on at the moment where you do have to do all that. And so I'm just like, oh my gosh, I can see everything. It's so bright and like colorful and all these things. So I'm still like, I have thoughts, but a lot of it is just through the lens of like, no, I'm still having a great time just watching mm-hmm. this. Same. I will say though that like in this episode, I think I am having a few more like criticisms mm-hmm. than I did in the previous two, where like the previous two, I was more like, okay, like what are we getting into? Like what's up? And I was like, okay, well, you know, it might seem slow here, but that's just because, like, it's laying the foundation, yeah. you know, and, like, all these other things. So I do think I have some more criticisms that we'll we'll get into when we go into the details yeah. of everything. But um, I mean, now that you mention that, I will say the pacing is kind of, <laughs> like... Odd. Like, once, yeah, I feel like I... It feels When I watched it place. again, I was kind of like, okay, we got to a certain point, and I was like, oh, wait, how much more do we have of this? And, like, trying to remember what was coming next, and I was like, oh, okay... Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, but I'm interested too, just because like there's only eight episodes. So after next week, we'll be halfway through, and so I'm like That's really crazy. interested to see like that is wild. where we'll like, be at that point. I you feel know like what I mean? We haven't even really gotten anywhere. Yeah, like, same. Oh. That's what like I, I feel like this was still felt like an introductory episode. Um, so I'm like kind of wondering like what like That's what's so gonna true. happen in the next episode to make it be like oh nah like we're like things are things happening are as opposed yeah. to like we're starting to get there you know what i mean or we're trying to figure out what's happening yeah because yeah. for me i also this episode felt like I, I i said this offline that i just don't know how i feel about this episode yet i'm still processing the high points again were numenor and i should have said also the harfoots like for me mm-hmm. those are the two high points mm-hmm. anytime um i mean it was just this episode we weren't in numenor before but like i don't know if it's just like the world building around them is better i'm not really sure but those are the high points but i felt like everywhere else the pacing just fell off the like it, a lot is happening but also now that i'm thinking about it in the grand like arc of the season i'm like but also not a lot is happening not that mm-hmm. much is happening right yeah so i don't know yeah so my opinion on the episode of the whole or those are the two high points but when i think of everything else i'm like i don't really no I don't know yeah yeah (laughs) yeah I think it's hard when you have so many now we have like so many characters and so many different plot lines that we have to go through and so this is the first episode actually where we did not see characters that we saw previously so we didn't see anything of Elrond or Durin and the dwarves Mm -hmm. we didn't see anything of Bronwyn and that group of um, men as they're supposedly still like leaving their village that being said we do get some new characters this episode which is exciting uh we see elendil who is a, a sea captain of royal descent whose mm. family tree i was like really confused about and i had to look it up like five times <laughs> um and then his son isildur mm-hmm. and i think we all know who yeah. that is <laughs> um i don't know about you guys every time he was on screen or someone said his name i was just like isildur <laughs> It's like, no. (laughs) Oh, my God. Um, They also, I think, I don't know if canonically Elendil has a daughter or if they wrote that in for this episode, but they have a daughter whose name I can't remember. (laughs) I also cannot remember. Yeah. Sister. Um, Sorry to that girl. (laughs) And she also, the actress, I think, could have been like. Like I, I think it could have been Emma Watson and okay. I would have wait, been like, yeah. why did I actually think that there was like a moment? I had a very there was one thought. second. I think when he, I think it was towards the end because I didn't think it before. But like yeah. when, like at some point in the end, there's like a shot and she's looking. She's like standing next to her dad and she's looking off. And I'm like, yo, that's. <laughs> <laughs> that I think is like uncanny. a lot of her like intonation and yeah. like pattern of speech sounds like Emma Watson. Mm-hmm. So. That's really funny. Um, also, we have Queen Muriel and um, her like crown and everything. So good. It's just glorious. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the, that's what I'm She's saying. So like the beautiful. design of Numenor. Every time we were in it, I was like, yes, let's go. I didn't. I loved Elendil, even though I was disappointed. I'm like, ah, oh, but he's a bad dad. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. <laughs> I was really yeah, vibing with um, Definitely not. Yeah. So, well, yeah, let's go ahead now. If you haven't l- watched the episode, turn it off now because we're going to go into more details and stuff. But yeah, sp- uh, spe- yeah, so that's your last like spoiler alert warning. Um, but yeah, that tiny detail of when he yelled at his daughter at their like dinner, mm-hmm. I was like, ooh, yeah, ooh, I really liked you. Yeah, I know. That was not cool. Was, that just, was not oh, cool. Man. He <laughs> definitely does not know what he's doing in the like parenting department. No. Yeah, and you can tell no. because they also mention like because he is known to have two sons and so they just kept keep mentioning the other one and like clearly something has happened there and we don't know yet but like it's just like oh there's clearly tension here your your other kids are kind of tiptoeing around you because of something mm-hmm. else that has happened mm-hmm. that we have not seen um and so yeah that was definitely like yikes I know. I, I felt like the uh, Tyra Banks meme, like, we were rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because when he broke out hey, into well, let, Elvish, let's, um, I was like, you were oh, like, oh, oh okay. Yeah, let's back up the episode yeah. a little bit to when we were rooting for him. Yeah, so, like, his first introduction, so Galadriel and Halbrand get rescued, um, and they, like, get taken up on top of the ship, and, like... Again, with like everyone on the boat is high and like the wind is sweeping and there's like and like their hair is always gorgeous. Anyway, um, and he's definitely shoot. Did I I swear 
someone on Instagram, it might have been Silmar Emily. I'm so sorry if I'm not crediting this person correctly. We refer to them as Ellen Dilf. No! <laughs> and <laughs> A plus. A plus. I can't. Um, yeah. Oh, <laughs> so I perfect. love that. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. <laughs> So. That I'm, I'm anyway. adopting that forthwith, even if he is, you know, maybe not a great father. I'm still he's still a father. father. He he still it still works. He's still a father. <laughs> yes, still a dope. It still works. Um, yeah, and he, I will say, this is something that I didn't really like, is the introduction as they're going into Numenor was kind of cheesy. Like, the dialogue, oh, the dialogue was, was really good. cheesy. It was like, like, home. well, you can see for yourself. <laughs> We're about to go go into port now, and then he's like, "What port?" And then there's this long pause, and he turns around and he goes, oh, "It's very right. much." Okay, that- it was very much for us. It was not for them at all. No, <laughs> like I think that was, was kind of the problem. It was kind of the problem because I think even if he had just said, "We're going to Numenor," I think everybody would have already been like, "Let's go!" Like, yes, you know what I mean. But home was yeah. like, "Okay, so you're just gonna like draw it out a little bit longer so that we can I get this shot or whatever. Like, you know. like we you know. know. I'm I know, ready. Know. Like show me literally I was just in there like no just show show me the city. Like stop. Yeah. Like stop playing around. Please show me that this being kingdom. That said when the music kicks in, like the theme and it has it has like some guitar in it, which I don't think we've ever really heard from like Lord of the Rings, you know, yeah. like acoustic guitar or whatever. Um no one come for me if I like I'm not like a music scholar or whatever, so I don't know. I could be totally wrong. Anyway, but like the the theme kicks in and the music and it's like slowly building and like revealing all these like statues. Um, I saw someone with a screenshot of one of the giant statues and there's like water coming out of the hand and someone said that might be Olmo or Mm -hmm. Ose. Um, And just like, I mean, obviously like it's all CGI, but unless they actually built that, in which case, wow. (laughs) Actually, you know what? They might have made a a a miniature. miniature, Like they did uh, a bigature, like they did with Lord of the Rings stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Like I, for context, I haven't, I don't really know anything about Numenor because I haven't completely finished. I haven't completely finished the Silmar. I don't know when it pops up. Um, I haven't read the appendices um, because... I finished Lord of the Rings and everyone was like, are you going to read the appendices? And I was like, eh, not really. I don't think that's ever going to be important. <laughs> that was, <laughs> that was me too, actually. I, I Well, really, I was just like, mm, I can't do it now. Like, it's not going to work. I don't have the, yeah. like, I've done enough. <laughs> so like one day I'll, I will go back and read it. But anyway, so like I know nothing about Numenor. So I think that was like the introduction of like, this is an island that the Valar gate, like the way they explained it. For me, having no context of like exactly what it is, Mm -hmm. I thought was really well done that, um, yeah, this is an island that the Valar gifted the men who fought on the side of the elves um, as a, you know, hey, thanks for dying. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for... (laughs) Yeah. All the bloodshed. I did <laughs> like, too, like, the architecture was really similar to, like, Minas Tirith and, like, other cities we've yes. seen. Like, which, and, be, like, right. it should be, exactly, because it's, like, you know, like, and I th- but I like that they, like, wove that in so it looks familiar, even though, like, we've never seen it before. Um, yeah. Yeah. And just, like, all I the did... water and, like, the it was just, it was very pretty. The vibes were really yeah. good. Oh, and the ships, too. Yeah. Like, the way that the... They, like, right. kind of out. Say, like, the first shot, the first shot of, like, the the ship, like, the sails are kind of, like, spreading so out. And then it's, like, sweeping in. And then, like, the sun is opening. And that's what I'm saying. It the was vibes. really well I was, done. like, when I, I was, I was having a good time. The yeah. vibes were immaculate. <laughs> um, I will say for me, like, it's interesting, you know, for people who don't, viewers who maybe ha- don't have any familiar- familiarity with Numenor, like that, that worked to me. I was like, this is very exposition, like dumpy. Like I know mm. a lot of people complained about the first two episodes having a lot of exposition. That part, I didn't think it was that bad in the first two episodes, but the, this was the first time as I was watching, I was like, okay, so we're just going to tell tell it all okay all yeah. right right now during this walk I, I did like the little dig that galadriel gives at halbrand because he's walking around he's like wow to think men like me built this city and she's <laughs> like, like no. men like you did not build this city <laughs> she's like, actually that's she kind throws, of the point she throws so not. much shade she'd be like she does not let anything slide ever and i love that yeah she's 
I I liked her a little less in this episode, which is a lot for me to say. I, know, I did because too. Can she I was be honest. I did too. I hate to say it. I hate to yeah, say it. This she's, is yeah, it pains me because one, Morphid Clark is doing an amazing a great job. job. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. Um, but she should there are just so many moments where I'm like, you're so arrogant and yeah. you're so cocky and you're so like when they're in the yes, yeah, so they go into the hall and something has happened in the history of Numenor and the elves where the men no longer welcome the elves and they do not want any to the point where they ousted their previous king, who is the current queen Muriel's father. Um, because he was loyal to the elves. And mm-hmm. so she, this was like a little bit of a comedy moment too, where she's like, I am Galadriel of the Noldor, <laughs> like daughter of the house of Fenar- golden house of Fenarfin or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then, and then Halbrand goes, Halbrand of the South. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, okay, that's a lot of Yeah. And she clearly was, and he even says to her as they're walking in, he's like, maybe like calm down a bit. Yeah. But like maybe. She has no, she has no chill. No, yeah, no, no, no. And like, I, I like that in some ways, but I also do think like, yeah, that she's been around for a really long time. So I yeah, feel like there's point, like a level of tact that she should have or like, yeah, I'm, I, that See, is, here's where I, I feel conflicted. I, first of all, I am a Galadriel stan, like certified. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, I absolutely. freaking love her and like was obsessed with all the promo, was obsessed with her the two, first two episodes. Like people were like, oh, that's not Galadriel. Whatever. I was like, ah, I don't want to hear it. I like, don't care. I don't <laughs> care. Do I, I, I literally do not care. But her final form is Cape Blanchett. She can do anything. Exactly. Yeah. And so, but this was the first episode I was like, oh, I don't know. It was feeling, again, I'm kind of processing live here because I really cannot put my finger on it, but almost like one note, which is weird for somebody mm. who is so like, yes, she's much younger than we see her in like the the trilogy, right? So yes, yeah, she's not as wise and, you know, lived and experienced as she is there, but she's quite old here like yeah. old yeah. is relative she's but like older she has than, experienced a lot i don't think we've seen her around anyone who's older than her either right exactly so she should have like like mary clay saying should have more tact i feel like you know it's just very one note like she's a like mm. spunky girl like girl boss and then that's like all that there is to her like which mm. i'm down for but i feel like yeah. there should also be this layer of like she's experienced a lot therefore yeah, I feel like she should have, like, the grace to know right. how to handle yeah. this, like, diplomacy situation of, like, she wants to seek passage to from Numenor to Middle-earth, and they are very against that, and they're like, mm, no, um, also you're an elf, get out of here, and, which is what I, I <laughs> never... <sighs> I'm always so confused whenever there are plot lines of like, okay, we want to get on a ship and leave. And they're like, no, no that can't be done. And it's like, like okay, well, what else can is I stay? Happen? And it's like, no, we also hate you. So like, what do you want me to do here? <laughs> I, like, yeah. I didn't ask to come here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That part was um, definitely confusing to me. And like, I get in terms of like plot, obviously she needed to be there for whatever. Right. Um, mm-hmm. But like, it definitely, other than just like them butting heads, I didn't understand why they couldn't just be like, okay, yeah, nah, you need to get off our island. As soon as possible. Yeah. yeah, I I didn't like the moment of Ellen Dill like watching her about to steal a boat, and he's and she's like, "Who are you?" That was another like really arrogant Galadriel line where it was also a lot of like arrogant like elf arrogance, and I'm like, mm. I can see like I can see why Numenor doesn't like right. y'all, <laughs> right? Because she's, she's just energy. like, we gifted you this island, or like I am so much older and wiser than you, and like yeah, all this and stuff, like, and you're yeah. just like, man. And then Muriel says. We were not given anything. We paid for it with, like, the blood of our ancestors mm-hmm. who died in that battle. And I was like, ooh, that's and so true. So true. Anyway, and so, yeah, she was, ta- he's talking to her, and she's like, who are you to speak, like, who is this mere mortal to speak to me? Mm-hmm. And he says, I have a son who runs blind and a daughter who runs fast, and I see both of their eyes and yours. And I'm like, okay, she is hundreds of years older than you. She is not your daughter. Like, you're not setting up a father daughter like relationship dynamic here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's definitely like, I don't know yet. Cause I feel like we've only seen a Ron Deer like in- interact with humans at this point. And so, like, yeah. I don't know yet if they've like figured out the balance of the elves mm-hmm. being like eternal and the men not being eternal. Like, what that right. like. Because right now, most of the interaction is just, like, antagonistic. Um, but we haven't gotten the, like, 
no, this person is like super, like has been around and you yeah. haven't, but obviously, you know, you have your authority and your whatever, but just like that dynamic, I don't think is fully and I don't know flushed out at this point. I'm not sure. It's unclear like how or if they'll be able to, but I don't know. Cause I like yeah. know they only license so much of like mm-hmm. Tolkien's mm-hmm. words to be able to tell the, like the stories that they're going to tell. So I'm like, if this is all we're getting, I do think it just needs tuning really is what I think. Mm-hmm. I think Galadriel's character needs tuning and just the elf human dynamic overall needs, needs some tuning. I think maybe is what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It seems Again, like really harsh life. and like, we want to make sure you guys know that there's a lot of tension. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's right. not a lot of like nuance. I'm aware. Right, yeah. exactly. During that conversation that she has with Ellen Dill, he, yeah, he speaks Elvish and she's like, you know Elvish? Okay. <laughs> and I also was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. And so he takes her to, it's called the Hall of Lore. And so he says, yeah, it's a quarter day's ride. And she goes, ride? This is another, so it's a sequence where at first I was like, okay, this is very Tolkien. It was like Mm -hmm. extraneous, like wide shots of the horses galloping Mm -hmm. across the scenery, close ups of the like hooves in the, in the dirt. And I'm like, okay, this is very Tolkien because that boy loved horses. So this is like (laughs) on brand. However, then it went on for like another minute and it's like a slow mo of Galadriel, like Like cheesing. (laughs) So excited to be on a horse. Um, which reminder this actually does this does go back to like how she's described in the Silmarillion of like mm-hmm. she loved to like because she she was with the all the like different like cousins and whatnot of Feanor she was like one of the only girls and so she was like riding and hunting or whatever and exploring with the boys so she loves doing this but I was like this is a bit much yeah <laughs> it just went on a bit too long like yeah. I, I was down for what they were trying to convey but then I was like okay we have have only so much time <laughs> yes yeah um so they they get to the hall of lore Especially, and she draw right because i'm about to see the hall of lore that sounds so promising let's h- hurry up i want to see the hall of lore <laughs> yeah and so they go there and i will say i am also that excited when i'm going to a library so <laughs> yeah, I get I mean, yeah it reminds me of um in avatar the last airbender the episode and Sokka goes to the library <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so they get there and she draws the symbol that she thinks is connected with Sauron. This is hilarious. She gives it to the librarian and immediately he's like able to pull it out of these like right. shelves and yeah. shelves of scroll. Like do they that? all have a database system. They all have the Dewey <laughs> Decimal system. Like how did he just find that? But whatever. And then she turns it on its side and realizes that it is a map of the Southlands and it's... If you, I haven't ever like described it on the podcast, but originally when you have it upright, it kind of looks like a trident, Mm -hmm. but a little bit broken up. And when you turn it on its side, it turns into like the mountains uh, that that border Mordor and then the two um, or like the mountain range and then like Mm -hmm. the two soul mountains on either side. And so that's been their signal of like where to go and what to do if, if Morgoth ever died. And they're like, oh, we better go because this means that the Southlands is where like Sauron and darkness is happening. So I guess we can jump there <laughs> because yeah. our boy Aaron Deer has been captured and he is imprisoned in an orc camp. And I'm assuming this is where we find out that like, cause there was that village where they were like, what? All the bodies are gone. Mm-hmm. And I'm assuming they were all kidnapped mm-hmm. and taken here. And yeah. So, um, and he finds there his like elf buddy, <laughs> his like buddy cop <laughs> partner, <Yeah>. you know, <laughs> that he was on patrol with, as well as their um like warden commander person. Or whatever, yeah. Commander, yeah. Um, and they've all been captured. Um I think it did a good job of like establishing like you see all the whips, you see all mm-hmm. the screaming mm-hmm. and like horror and the I think the orcs look cool where like they're you can tell how they like evolve quote unquote into what we see in Lord of the Rings yeah. but they're also like still a little bit different mm-hmm. I I'm think really... the like and I, skeleton I, helmet things are yeah. like an added creepy detail yeah and I feel like just that like in general like we kind of mentioned before too with Numenor like I think that the show does a good job of that um, of just like showing us things that are familiar but like clearly not the same but you can see how we got there like i think they're doing a good job of that in terms of just like set and um what is it like wardrobe and all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. too mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I really am digging the orcs in this in this series. Like their their look and their vibe. I like that they have like a horror element to them. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just been that part to me has been really fun. Yeah. So okay, so they're like, I don't know. T- oh, they're digging tunnels. That's what they're doing. I was like, I don't know why they're digging. <laughs> it's just like it's just like holes. They're just digging <laughs> to build character. Um, anyway, they're digging tunnels. And the entire land, like, it's all a wasteland now. And, like, all the trees are, like, burned down or chopped down or whatever. And there's this one tall tree that still stands. And they're being told to chop it down. And the commander speaks up and is like, this tree has been here longer than any of you. And this is, again, like, it. they did a good job of, this is a very important theme for Tolkien, mm-hmm. of, like, preserving nature and seeing it, um, seeing its destruction at the hand of, like, war and evil was something really heartbreaking for him to experience. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, ass- I'm assuming, like, that's where it all draws from is, like, his experience in the war. Mm -hmm. and like seeing all that destruction and seeing nature which he loves so much and that's a trait that he wrote into the elves is that they love like i mean think back to you know in i think it's two towers when they go into the forest and and legolas is like the trees are angry or whatever he says um he's like they're old very old that's it (laughs) um (laughs) But, like, he's connected to the trees. Mm -hmm. So they don't want to cut down the tree. And I was like, you better watch yourself with how you're speaking up. This is not going to end well. Yeah. And this, like, scene, it's so tense. You can tell everyone knows that this is a mind game. They're like, wow, we're going to reward your strength with a water ration. (laughs) And so they slowly pass around this water bottle that they've been given. And then... The uh, Aaron Deer's friend, who I can't remember <laughs> his name, yeah, um, but we don't need to worry about that much longer, um, gets his throat cut and Oops. dies. Ismail, is that his, is that the actor's name? Cordova, I think, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Ismail, yeah. yeah. He did, gr- like, great in this scene. Yeah. And I, like, I felt the anguish of, like, because remember, elves don't die. Like, mm-hmm. this right. is heartbreaking. And then he goes, I will cut down the tree. Mm-hmm. And he just stands up and... And then he goes over and is like, and I looked it up. He says something in Elvish, and it means "forgive me" um, before he starts cutting down the tree. Oh no! Like, <laughs> no. Yeah, um, yeah. I was and, just gonna say, and, yeah, he did. He's he did a really great job this like episode. I, yeah, in general. So I said like my high points were the Harfoots and Numenor, but like I didn't really care for the camp scenes that much more like i, I mean i not care for them either, I, think, they yeah. were, they, I feel like we spent too much time there for what yeah. ends up happening which is getting being back to where we were essentially mm-hmm. but that said it could it would have felt more like a drag with uh, for as much time as we spent there that i think we shouldn't have except that uh, he was doing the a great acting, job the acting, yeah <laughs> yeah really that's yeah and that's so kind of how good. i felt too like i felt like it could have been condensed a little bit and we probably maybe either could have learned more or um seen oh, yeah. someone or I been somewhere say, else we do learn um that the orcs are they're like tunneling and they're looking for something Gr- they're going yeah. after something specific mm-hmm. um possibly that blade that the magic evil blade that oh, theo true. has i don't know we'll have to see <sighs> Forgot about um, that, that was one theory shared in last week's episode um, is that they're going after that blade. But yeah, they're looking for something. So that's, yeah, that's kind of like all we learn. And then yeah. I guess this was also just showing how destructive they are because mm-hmm. we also, there's this, okay, there's this long battle, like fight sequence of them trying to break out at the end of the episode. The first part I thought was great, like showing them using the chains, mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. as weapons and stuff. And their goal is to get someone broken out so that they can run off and go find help. So that's all they're trying to do in the scene is like buy time to like break to, to hit the chains long enough until one of them breaks. Um, and every time they do that, someone, the person who runs away dies. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I thought the fight sequence was cool. There is one point where I was like, this is hard giving hardcore, like, hey, remember how everyone loved Legolas doing all the random, like, trick <laughs> shots? Yes. Um, 
when he when Aaron Deer like jumps up on the chain. Yeah. Oh like, yeah. Like he's running on so the chain cool. and jumps in the air <laughs> and like smashes down the shelter so the sun exposes. Yeah. He did the, do the that. Orcs. It was I'm it was very it. cool. Like, it's, I was like, let's it, go. <laughs> and then they bring in a warg who Which? <laughs> did not look good. No. It did not look great. It had like it cartoon not eyes. It did look yeah. It was, it was the, a struggle. The warg, wow. <laughs> the warg. I've seen better wargs in, yeah. in older movies. <laughs> I've seen better wargs in the Hobbit trilogy. Yeah. Right? Which is, I think, saying something. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> um, and that was kind of when I was like, okay, I'm kind of over this battle sequence. And also the way I was like, the amount of times that they like stopped hitting the chains to like pause and look at what was happening. I'm like, keep going, <laughs> keep going. And then you will escape. Mm-hmm. Like stop pausing to look around. Like you're just wasting time. Um, and eventually the commander gets out. This is another heartbreaking moment because he, Aaron Deer runs up like onto the ledge yeah. and looks out and you just see him standing there. And then all of a sudden he like falls backwards and you see an arrow in his chest and then yeah. another arrow just hits him. He got and again, Boromir, Ismail's unfortunately. Reaction he got is sh- Yeah, big Boromir vibes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think what makes that moment... It, I like I felt the impact of that of mm-hmm. being like oh he didn't get away and then yes yeah, seeing um Aaron Deer's reaction again another A plus acting moment is great and they decide to keep him alive and they say we're gonna take him to Adar <laughs> and so this is actually how the episode ends is he's being taken to Adar um who we believe is the, their name for Sauron and this figure starts walking into frame and he's about to come into focus and then it you know That's credits and the episode's <laughs> over <laughs> Cliff. which I will say they, they've done a good job with cliffhangers although I'm like please just tell me who this man is and where mm-hmm. Sauron is yeah. like I just want to know is it, it, I would actually be fine if Sauron didn't show up until like the last episode yeah but, I was really surprised like, I so kind I of like, so I kind of hope it's not him but same. who knows We'll see. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm keeping an open mind, but I'm like, I kind of want... Again, the pacing mm-hmm. is weird. So I'm like, are y'all about to do it? Or are y'all going to save it like for the end of the season, which seems more correct. But also a lot has happened and a lot needs to happen. So like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was like, there's no way this is actually going to be Sauron because we're no. only on episode three. Like, mm-hmm. there's no way they're actually going to reveal him now. Like, that would be... It seems weird. So... I mean, but it could be because we didn't like we didn't see Bronwyn. We didn't see the dwarves. Mm. We didn't see Elrond mm. in this episode. It could be that next episode we don't see mm. Aaron Deer. So true. we don't see Sauron true, true, true. until maybe like two episodes from now. So I don't know. Since you love the Harfoots so much, want to talk about them? I do. I love Let's them. Do I it. love them so I much. I love Nori. I love Poppy. I They're just such sweet characters. I know we can get to the specifics of this episode, but just in general, the whole time, the all three episodes, I'm like, this is a great time. Mm-hmm. I know people are, it's very contentious to talk about who the stranger is. People don't want it to be, you know, certain characters. I don't know who the stranger is. I'm not really pressed because I just am happy we have Heartfoot and we're we're able to see them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I thought the Heartfoots are like I just think they're really interesting. Um and yeah. like just like their culture and the way that they move around, like I think is interesting. Super and it was weird. Like I think the part where they were like reading from the book of the Left Behind is that like it was both like mournful and like you could tell that they all really like felt that but it was also like a threat at the same time um and so the way that they like that it balanced that i thought was really cool and like really interesting because you're like okay we see this like community and they all really love each other and they care for each other at the same time if you're you know you fall slow or you get, behind, <laughs> you get left you're behind you're gonna get left behind um, yeah. and like that's just what it's gonna be and so like both of those things both of those things together was just like yeah it was just super interesting yeah and we also learn in that scene that Poppy's entire family. I know. I know. Um, it, it sounds like they were like killed in a landslide. Yeah. Um, rather than like they fell behind and were left behind. Yeah. And she got separated from them. But it, and it's not like oh her mom and her dad. It was like her mom and her dad and like her three siblings. Yeah. Like her entire family. Guy, yeah. it's so sad. Oh and my gosh! Like, I was like, no. 
it also puts a lot of like how, how she's been up to this point into perspective and you just like kind of yeah. understand more why she's like nori what are you doing like i mean i have agree- i've been on her side this whole time but still like <laughs> yeah, getting like, that, like i've been like yes poppy please Let's... get her please get her but yeah I'm I, definitely but also like situation. yeah but also like having that like backstory mm-hmm. helps just like connect with her more than just like oh she's the best friend with some sense yeah. yeah she like she's lost a lot and mm-hmm. she has to be she also like has to be more cautious because she doesn't necessarily have like those family members to look out for her anymore whereas yeah. nori does and nori kind of acts like oh well anything that happens to me will you know we'll figure out or it's okay but i and you know i'm okay risking that but um yeah poppy like knows what it's like to lose that so like it's so yeah so sad and like and pretty wild because we see, you know, and we can get to the sequence of events, but, you know, they're they're going off. And the whole thing is that the families carry their own carts. But so Poppy's carrying her own. And it's just like they seem really young, right? Like mm-hmm. kids, teenagers, whatever the heart for equivalent of that is. Yeah. And I'm like, nobody took her in. Like she really is just on her own. And that's wild to me and really shows that like, well, it seems like, you know, the Harfoots are like. Ooh, a fun loving like cutesy uh race of people like it's it's real out here that not yeah, only, yeah. i was like this is kind of harsh actually right. like, this is definitely yeah. i think it's also a way to differentiate from like our hobbits that we mm-hmm. know in lord of the rings mm-hmm. who are all very like cutesy and they're having parties and you know they love the little children love it when gandalf comes to town to set off fireworks or whatever and it's just yeah it just seems so harsh to me and i'm mm-hmm. like oh my god so, yeah okay so the issue is that in a previous episode nori's father's uh foot broke really um, broke because yeah. he, oh, it was gross Ugh. and there was another moment in this episode too where oh, i was like oh. really we showed that but you didn't show <laughs> like they it's a fight sequence where they do like a close-up of someone breaking someone else's arm yeah but they, they did cut away in that same fight when someone's head is being bashed into a mm, wall just right? like so they're like we choices. draw the line there but not at like <laughs> literally brutal that was, bone breaking uh, gross anyway very bad so he broke his foot in the previous episode because Nori was away with a stranger and should have been helping to set up for this little festival that they do at the end of every, like, right before the start of a migration. Um, and so he broke his foot and he can't travel as well. And what happens is that in this festival, Nori is able to, she's able to steal some of the, like, star charts from Haddock's book and get them to the stranger. And he is looking them way too close to a fire, and they catch on fire, and he freaks out and goes running through the camp, and they, and then everyone's hiding, and then he, like, he only knows a few words, and he says, Nori, and that's, I love that, that's a very common thing, I think, of, like, when you, when something crazy happens, and it's all, and it's, like, because of one character, there's always that long shot of, like, (laughs) everyone else backing away from that one character, Mm -hmm. and then that character, like, looking up really sheepishly, and so the threat is that because they, like, went outside the, I forget what they're, like, do they have a name for, like, their group, or they, like, a tribe, are they a... School of Harfoots. I, <laughs> <Yeah, like laughs> anyway. I think it's like the. I think they say like don't go off the path or something. Or but that's yeah. Like anyway, it. So, yeah. So she goes off. That's the whole thing. She went off the path, so to speak, to help this guy. And the threat is to be decaravaned and be mm-hmm. like forced to stay Sleep behind and you're yeah. on your own. But because she is young. He, the leader, says, you will still come with us, but your family will be at the back of the pack. And so I guess that means if they had been at the front, they would have been the ones setting the pace. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so they could have been going a little more slower because his foot is broken. But now at the back, there's a good chance they're going to get left behind. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, it it wouldn't just have been her getting decaravaned. It would have been her whole family getting decaravaned. Super harsh. However, she does, like, at one point, she slips up and says something like, oh, yeah, we, and they're like, we, who's we? Oh, and yeah. she does not, she's like, I'm not going to drag Poppy into this. And Good it's friend. like, just me and him. He's my friend. Um, And, like, really bringing, like, more Tolkien themes, you know, and she says, what, what like, what are we, like, what good is living if we don't have friends? Mm-hmm. And, you know, what's living for if we don't have friends? And they're like, well, shut up. This is how we survive. 
Um, and then, yeah, at the end of the episode, when we see them struggling, um, the stranger had followed them. And he, she's like, this is how we're going to keep up. He's going to help us push the cart and we'll help him find those stars. And so that's how, like, they're part of the story ends this episode. I did feel they were a bit slow on the uptake. This was the obvious solution to me from Jump. I was yeah. like, oh, no big deal. You got a really tall a giant, essentially, <laughs> Dude, who could just kill <laughs> you. <laughs> but, but y'all want to be, y'all want to be out, like very insular and are like no nobody no outsiders i'm like well he's got the solution so mm-hmm. i don't know maybe we should invite a, an outsider in so i'm glad that that's how it ended i also really yeah. like the stranger i think you know whoever he is i really hope he ends up being a good character i know there's like lots of theories about who he is um mm-hmm. but i want him to be a good character because i'm like he's at this point so endeared to me like i see him through yeah, his yeah. Eyes. So i'm like yeah mm. yeah there's so many others that I'm just like so suspicious of, and he's the only one that I'm like, no, but he's so like right precious. I want him no, to like. He's gonna be nice. He's gonna yeah. be nice. He's not gonna hurt anyone. Yeah. And he messed up everything, and he was like Nori, and I was like, oh, that's my friend. <laughs> he was scared. Yeah, he literally. What was happening? Oh, uh, yeah. How can we be like? How can we be like talking about this? old man I know, he's like grown he's so grown he's like, he's a like no. <laughs> okay well we can talk about a less grown man which is Halbrand oh, um, boy. I don't oh, care boy. if he turns out to be the most evil man on earth I am in love with him <laughs> He and he and Galadriel have such good chemistry. It's such like good God. Chemistry. such it's good chemistry. Wild, it's upsetting. Okay. I'm like, okay. you forget okay. she's supposed to be married to some other dude. <laughs> <laughs> My theory is that they are in an open relationship, and mm. Celeborn is just sitting at home, like reading and drinking tea because yeah. he's like, "You're, in, I love you, dear, but your energy is too much. Y- you can go explore the world. I trust that, like, eventually, you know, that we still love each other, but you can go live a life." I'm going to stay here and like maybe read some books or something. If you want to, you know, come back and say, hey, every now and then. (laughs) Yeah, I'm really conflicted because technically, like we we know that Celeborn is supposed to be in the mix, but they're just so, they're really setting up some kind of like enemies to lovers right here. (laughs) Which I am just like. Basically, that's the vibes they're giving. And I. Yeah. Yeah. Halbrand in this episode, he is, he's like. I want to stay. Are you kidding? Look around. This is great. Like my village was burned to the ground. Um, <laughs> This is great. I'm going to stay here. And so the whole episode, he's trying to he wants to join like the blacksmiths because I guess that's what he did previously in his village um, or, or whatever he knows how to do. But they say you have to have a crest or something or you have to be part of a, the, the guild. guild or something. The lollipop guild or something. Yeah. (laughs) So at a bar, some guys start like, you know, annoying him. And then he like turns the tables because he sees that they have this little crest and he buys them drinks and then he pickpockets it off of them and then they track him down. And this was the arm breaking, head bashing fight. But like when he goes like please don't do this and then they Oof. all they do is punch him twice and i'm yeah. like boy you could have just laid on the ground and like stayed there but that's fine nah. and then he like viciously attacks him and gets put in prison which i guess was his whole intent in- plan was that he would be forced to remain in numenor mm-hmm. 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 yeah i definitely felt like the don't do this definitely felt like a you, it was like the warning it's like you got the wrong one type situation and <laughs> yeah. i was just like Yikes, bro. <laughs> yeah, when he said that, I was like, well, I don't know what he's about to whip out, but y'all should probably not do this. Yeah, <laughs> maybe don't. <laughs> I will say, though, it is kind of like, is that like a hint at like potential, I don't know, darkness within him? Oh, that yeah. All, that oh, he was able I to like, totally. turn on a switch like that. Yeah. It was really, well, you see like, I, I gasped too. and was like, oh, my was God, like, my Ooh. heavens. <laughs> I noticed it, too. And shout out to this actor. I don't know his name. Um, I should learn it because I, I, know. I saw it earlier, too, when he is at the like bar pub Numenor equivalent whatever mm-hmm. you call it um and they're annoying him like there is this expression like where he's like looks murderous in my opinion like yeah, yeah. so mad and then on a dime like just mm-hmm. like you're right I haven't I yeah haven't been yeah uh thankful enough and that was the moment because I think like maybe after the last couple episodes like when we were talking 
um, we were like, is he Sauron maybe? And like after that, I was like, mm, something's, <laughs> I, I, by the end of the something's episode, no longer him. think that he's Sauron, but that moment, the way when he had that stare, I was like, and then the way he flipped, like you said, I was just like, mm, yeah, he is suspicious. And- Earlier in when they're in front of Muriel, he's the one who like he's very charismatic, like charismatic Mm -hmm. and he like he's manipulative, like he knows how to frame and change the conversation to be in his favor. And so we see that. And that's always, you know, a little unsettling of like, we don't know what to expect from this. Like, what's going to happen? Where are you going to go with this? Um his, the actor's name is Charlie Vickers, by the way. Hey, mm-hmm. shout out Charlie Vickers. You're really doing the thing. <laughs> um, it looks like this is his, like... I mean, it, it. I also... I appreciate that so many of these actors are, like, brand new. Like, yeah. they might have done a couple, a couple other smaller, you know, projects, you know, beforehand. But, like, for the most part, these are their, like, big roles. Big, yeah. Because it's so much easier to go into a story like this without being, like... Hey, it's the guy from the Matrix. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Man, he's hot. Anyway, I know that he's not on Instagram because I did go to follow like almost like the entire cast mm-hmm. on Instagram and he is not on Instagram, unfortunately. Also, this will take my favorite moment of the episode. After this conversation with the queen and everyone and he like negotiates for them to be able to stay a little bit and, mm-hmm. you know, buy them some time. He goes over to hug Ellen Dill yes. as a way of thanks. And I remember being like, that's weird. And even <laughs> Ellen Dill is like, this is weird. <laughs> um, and it's because he was pickpocketed pocketing uh Galadriel's knife and so he like as they're leaving he like reaches his hand out for a moment of like truce or something between them and is like I just want peace like can you give me my peace for a bit and she's like fine so they grab hands and then he like pulls her closer and like swings the knife like Bro. into her arm Bro. and <laughs> stares at her and with this smirk and is like just in case you go around making more enemies than friends or, or something like I, I was just like I really that hate might have been me. hotter yeah, that might have been was... hotter than the doors yeah. <laughs> like, I was I was stunned I was yeah. stunned into yeah. silence at yeah. that moment I was yep. like wow y'all really I was... really I just really saw the writing on the wall for me I'm mm-hmm. like dang I really hope I mean he then the episode progressed I'm like no he is gonna be a dark character dang He's definitely this a is gonna be rough for me this is yeah. gonna be rough for me but yeah. I'm already here I'm out here it's already. fine it's too late <laughs> I don't I mean the thing is, is that because everyone is so hot I almost just don't care anymore <laughs> They are all okay. very. It's I true. Swear, uh, one one day I'll like stop talking about how hot everyone. But that was but no, legitimately. Like, every, I think yeah. legitimately like I hadn't really thought about it that much till you said. It. I'm like, we know, wait, but like for real, like everybody except for maybe the Hardfoots, like it, like throughout the show, even I'm mm-hmm. like all very attractive yeah. people. Yeah, even Duran. Duran smoking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Smo- he, him and his his red hair and red beard. Yeah, I'm into it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, okay, everyone take a sip of water um, so we can cool down after that moment. <laughs> um, yeah, so we learn the roots of Halbrand. So he's in jail <laughs> and Galadriel goes to visit him. Um, and she says that while they're in the library, they uncovered this symbol, which is the same symbol that's on like a little pouch. It, it's not like a necklace, but it's like a pouch mm-hmm. that he wears on a necklace. And I'm like, what's in the pouch? Like, what is mm-hmm. this? That he's like, he was like, don't look at it. Like in the previous episode, like Galadriel was staring at it and he like grabbed it and like shoved it down his shirt. All right, like, way to be conspicuous, to wear- dude. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, And so she says, this is the symbol of the leader of the men of the Southlands who gathered everyone up to fight together in the war of Morgoth and that's why your people now don't have any king is because you are there supposed to be their king and you are weighed down by that pressure and I think they need to be with everything that's going on with Sauron they need that leader again to reunite them and he was running away from that because he know he's like our people lost that war. We were on the side of Morgoth. I'm not going to be that king. To which I was like, well, then why are you holding on to this little, like, crest necklace thing if you, like, are running, actively running away from it? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, toss it in the ocean or something if you don't want people to know who you are. 
Um, and so that, and so then Galadriel goes in like very ins- like elven inspirational speech <laughs> of like, I believe a higher, greater thing brought us together um, because we're supposed to team up and go and like stop this war in the Southlands and stop Sauron. And so that's kind of like where we um, end with their characters here. But he says, so, see, I don't trust him. I don't trust anything mm-hmm. about him in his story. Like, I, I'm like, I'm, a, I'm like, okay, this could be his backstory. But also, he's like, I got off a dead body. I'm like, what if the twist is he really did get it off He really a dead did. Body. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, like, I just, anything around Halbrand, I'm just like, I trust nothing. I don't trust my eyes or my ears. And hopefully, we have answers one way or the other. Like, if, no, it's just like it is on paper. Or if it's like, nope, plot twist by the end of the season. That's the one thing yeah. I want before yeah. the end of the season is to know definitively who Hal Brandon, even if he's How a bad guy. How we stand guy. with him. Like, yeah. Where, yeah. where do we stand with him? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think, like, even if he's not, like, a bad guy from Jump, like, is I can just see a corruption arc coming. Right. You know what I mean? Like, Ooh, especially he has all that. He has all the darkness in him already. He's like, if he really is, like, the the son of or like you know the heir to these kings who went with Mar- morgoth like mm-hmm. how does that show up for him um, and you know we know that how many is like nine kings are gonna get corrupted by sauron anyway Ooh. so it's just kind of like mm, is this a nazgul or uh, like that's kind of been my once right. they said he was a king oh, i was like hmm mm. interesting so like it's just i feel okay, like wait. even if he's not bad now i think that he will be but I agree that I want to know, like, what's up with him, at least. And not constantly be like, okay, no, I love him. Oh, no, just oh, no, kidding. He just, bro- he just, right. like, destroyed like, I, that man's arm. Right. Like, I wanted to be like, okay, no, we know where he stands. And then after that, if we see him, like, devolve or whatever, then cool. Like, that right. feels like that's what's going to happen. Because so. the guessing game is fun for a little bit, but I don't want it to drag on too long. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm having fun now. <laughs> Severus but... Snape. Right, exactly. <laughs> like, don't, we don't want to, I don't want to be doing this the whole show. Like, let's yeah. figure it out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know I just said that, like, no matter what, I will love Halbrand because, oh my God, he's so hot. Um. <laughs> however, when, as soon as she was like, they have no king because you are their king and you are, like, under the weight of the armor that lays on your shoulder or whatever, I was like, are we really doing like an Aragorn plot line here? That's also yeah. why I don't want that to be just his like on the Yeah, I was like, we I'm did like, this already, and it mm-hmm. was one of the greatest stories ever. Yeah, you right. know, like so we don't. And P- I think P- so. I just really hope we don't go in that same direction of like a king who is reluctant mm-hmm. to like lead these people and step up, and then like their journey is that they eventually realize like okay, no, it's time for me to do Like, I don't yeah. want that. And that's because- what I thought was happening. But then again, he's the king in the Southlands. We don't know no kings in the Southlands, except the ones that are not yeah, really God. people are anymore. Yeah. So I'm kind of like, if it, if they do go that way, I feel like, like Ugh. you said, it's like, please it don't. But I think there's a way to like, make it make new. Make it unique. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, that'll be really, I will be really mad if they ruin someone this hot by making them a Nazgul. <laughs> That's just a waste. But think, of- but think, okay, but like, can we think about it for a second? If there is all this chemistry, like maybe feelings later on down the story, but then you have this, like, he like goes down the bad path and Galadriel's like, no, don't go down the bad path. And like the tragedy of him becoming a Nazgul, like that's, that's, that's a good story. Mm-hmm. I mean, not a happy one, but a good one. No, yeah. <laughs> and then, and then she's like, you know what? I, I don't need this. I have a husband sitting at home <laughs> right, exactly. reading and drinking tea. <laughs> I don't need this in my life. They were right. I was doing too much. This was too much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I think I think that's kind of it. Is there anything else that you guys wanted to bring up? I guess all in all, I felt this episode, you know, there was a lot of worry even like in the lead up to, you know, just when it was announced that this show was going to be a thing, like how true is it going to stay to Tolkien's lore, yada, yada, yada. And like, I'm not in any, any realm of fandom. Am I like a purist? Like, I don't think things have to be adapted mm-hmm. exactly the way, but I do think they should t- stay true to the heart of the thing. Mm-hmm. And I think this is in this episode, I had questions, n- not definitively like, are they or aren't they? But it was the first episode that I was like, um, 
So these are like liberties, liberties we're taking. Okay, mm. interesting. All right. Um, and so like I'm waiting to see what how how it shakes out still. And I'm still ultimately like uh, I feel like I'll be saying that like at the end of the season, I'll be like, Yeah, I'm still waiting to see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, I feel like by the end of the season I'll have a more like definitive yeah. answer, unless they do something like crazy, like in the you know what I mean? Like there's possible mm. there's like a thing that happens and I'm just like what or yes okay they got it kind of thing Mm -hmm. but i kind of feel like it'll likely happen once it's done and then i can like think about it as a whole if that makes sense Mm -hmm. yeah Um, that makes sense but yeah i'm not yeah i'm not sure i'm very much just like like i said like it's very pretty and i enjoy (laughs) watching it which you know with like all the criticisms and stuff aside like at least i'm having fun which is nice like yeah do like both obviously like um, but there have been plenty of things that I have consumed that I've had criticism for and also was oh, not absolutely. enjoying it. So I'm like, <laughs> so at least I'm like, at least there's like room for both this time, which has not mm-hmm. been the case for a while. Yeah. yeah. The first two episodes were all good vibes only for me. And this is the first episode where I was like, okay, I see some critiques, but I think ultimately, mm-hmm. especially after yeah. talking it out this episode, I feel that ultimately it's still a good time and it's just in this weird stage where it's like too early to know but we are almost at the halfway point so what does that mean? Yeah. yeah. Lots of questions. I think also like if they hadn't released both episodes at the same time. That's true too. It might yeah. feel less fast or I don't know if that makes sense but like mm-hmm. it felt kind of felt like it was like one big episode and then this is the second one but like yeah. again we're almost halfway through so it's just like mm-hmm. slow and fast at the same time which is weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the yeah the pacing is especially like within the episodes where the Harfoots are like ending their little plot line, and then oh, we still have fifteen minutes, and then that I think that like last fifteen minutes was all the battle and yeah. fight to escape the orc camp, mm-hmm. um, and then yeah, ending with that cliffhanger of this guy named Adar or who's called Adar approaching the camera out of focus. Did so. we talk about how like I've been seeing stuff on Twitter about? Because they going back to like Lord of the Rings oh, when Arwen calls Elrond Adar, and so everybody's like, Are the orcs calling this dude daddy? And it's been <laughs> yeah. making me laugh so much. <laughs> yeah, they are. Yeah, I um shout out to Wizard Way Chris, of course, as always. Um, but on Instagram, they are posting like massive threads breaking down basically like every elvish moment mm. in the episodes and like translating what it means. Um, and yes, Adar means means father in Sindarian. Yeah. Which is the more common mm-hmm. version of Elvish. Interesting. Yeah. I yeah. saw a tweet that said yeah, that they basically are calling him daddy, yes. Yeah, that basically said <laughs> like, uh how Arondir we'll must have been so see... confused. Because right. like basically like, this guy, what? like this orc is leaning down and saying for daddy like in his ear. And I was like, that's a fair point. That is yeah. that is odd. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have any, like, a specific favorite moment? Well, actually, I was going to say something for, with the Harfoots, but you did bring up that <laughs> scene with Halbrand and Galadriel where he gives her the knife back, oh my God, oh, which yeah. is so good. But no, I'm, I'm going to go rewatch it a million times. <laughs> I'm going to stick with my original. And I really just loved the whole, um, I guess the whole scene where uh, Nori's almost decaravan, but specifically how she protects her friend. I thought that was, I really mm. enjoyed that moment between them, what it meant, especially after learning that Poppy has learned, lost all her family. So I felt like that scene, what it meant and where it fell in the episode, I really enjoyed. Mm-hmm. I really, I just liked Numenor. I loved that like introduction. And so far all of the like sets and just like the world building has been really dope for me. Like I kind of felt the same way, like when we saw Moria, um, in mm-hmm. the last episode um yeah so like just seeing Numenor was like just I yeah. was really excited about that I'm really enjoying a lot of the characters getting a little more questionable with Galadriel yeah. um and then like even more questionable when it comes to like all these plot lines and we're like okay how are they gonna connect but I think like by far like the world building of like establishing like this is Numenor here's this theme to let you know this mm-hmm. music theme to let you know how you should feel about it and like all and this other stuff also I, think I they're doing wanted really good to like I saw uh on Twitter there was like this interview with the like I'm blanking on his name right now but the man who does the scores <laughs> for this yes. show um and it's like bear bear, bear yeah something. like bear something um but he was talking about how he like uses specific instruments in like the score for Numenor 
where he wants it to feel like it's going to be extinct so that if you watch this show and go straight into Lord of the Rings, you can like notice certain things are missing yeah. and that that's like Numenor. It was so dope. Like, <gasps> that's yeah. Great. I mean, I literally said, I meant, I typed in bear into Twitter and the first one is bear grills. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Cause I literally said, ooh, hit my microphone, literally said I can hear some kind of guitar and mm-hmm. that's something that you don't hear in Lord of the Rings. Yeah. So that's so cool. Yeah. Oh God, man. I was just like, and so I, cause great. I, I love listening to scores and stuff, but I, and like, you know, you know how they make you feel when you're like listening to them or when you're watching a movie or whatever, but to just like kind of see the way that he was like storytelling through that yeah. was just like a thing that I had not seen anyone really talk about because I don't go, I've never gone that deep into it. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, it was just really cool. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you both for joining me to talk about this episode um, and how high everyone is. Um, (laughs) And the enemies to lovers of it all. Yes. Oh, my God, yes. Um, Where can people find you on the internet? Ooh, okay. So you can find us, um, blacknerdscreate.com is our website. Um, We're on Twitter at blknerdscreate and on Instagram at blacknerdscreate. Um, And then we're doing... We ooh, lots of things when it comes to Rings of Power <laughs> yeah. this season. But, like we all, yeah. like everyone is so overloaded. There's so with, many like, things. Um, everyone's doing so much. So on Mondays we're doing. We have like spaces on Twitter um, where we're talking about like the last episode, um, and those are at mon- Mondays at 5 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Eastern, and then on Fridays at the same time we're um, a part of Fanology, which is like Amazon's like fan social media like account um they're doing hosting these like watch parties um on fridays so we're doing that as well at 5 p.m eastern or 5 p.m pacific 8 p.m eastern um yeah Yeah, and then like time yeah and then the tolkien black folks uh hashtag is where we're kind of just like hanging out being during those times but also just like whenever in general off and out of pocket (laughs) yes (laughs) yes <laughs> and where can they find you Bayana? just oh, you oh uh, me um i'm on twitter at yana wrote it and i'm on twitter at delia is typing that's d-e-l-i-a is typing yes go check all of those things out they will be linked in the episode description um especially if you're looking for You know, I mean, part of what's so fun about having these episodes come out week to week is that, like, you can, like, gather together on these, yeah, like, watch parties. Like, there's Mm -hmm. so many. I don't even, like, know how to, like, use all these different, like, watch parties. And then there's, like, Twitter spaces and all these things. And I'm like, I don't Mm -hmm. know what these are. And I'm just overwhelmed. You know, (laughs) kind of still, definitely still learning spaces. We did our first one last week. And I was like, ooh, I'm not going to touch any buttons. I don't know know what's going on here. (laughs) But, like, those are great ways to... To be able to like connect with other people and have conversation back and forth uh, about like your first reactions or going into theories um, when you know you're you're waiting for your favorite podcast to come out. See? So <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Is a proud member of WBNE. If you want to learn more about the network, you can go to WBNE.org. The cover art is by Vaishon Brandon. You can support him on Instagram at Vaishon Designs. You can get merch for That's What I'm Talking About by going to tpublic.com slash Pod. You can follow the podcast on social media at Pod. You can follow me on Twitter and TikTok at MCWhatsUp and on Instagram at MCTurnDownForWhat. If you want to support the podcast, you can go to patreon.com slash Pod. There are different level tiers depending on what level of support you want to show, although I sincerely appreciate any support you want to show. This week's sponsor is Johan. Johan, thank you so much for your continued support and for remaining a sponsor. I hope that you are enjoying Rings of Power if you are watching it. As always, if you like what you're listening to, please make sure to rate and review. Do either of you have parting words for the audience? Ooh. I don't know. I don't think so. You know? Day cool? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll close out with Celeborn and Galadriel are in an open relationship. And that's what I'm talking about. <laughs>